So in this lecture, we are going to look at the unpaired t-test. If you want to see if the means of two different samples are significantly different, or if your samples are drawn from normally distributed populations with the same variance, then you have to do an unpaired t-test. So when there are more than two groups to compare, do a one-way analysis of variance, which we'll do. So you can do this. Now, depending on your t-test option settings, if you attempt to perform a t-test on a non-normal distribution, on a non-normal population or populations with unequal variances, Zigma plot will inform you that the data is unsuitable for a t-test. And will probably also suggest that you do the man with me rank some test. The unpaired t-test is a parametric test based on the estimate of the mean and standard deviation parameters of a normally distributed population from which the samples were drawn. It tests for a difference between two groups that is greater than what can be attributed to random sampling variation. The null hypothesis of an unpaired t-test is that the means of the population that you drew the samples from are the same. If you can confidently reject this hypothesis, you can conclude that the means are different. So to perform a t-test, all you have to do is come to the analysis and now you're comparing two groups. So then you have your t-test and it brings about this pop-up. The data format is in three. So you can have raw, which we've already shown. So it means you're comparing these two groups of male and female you want to compare them their mean and if they are also normally distributed and then you can also put it in this format which is the mean size standard deviation or even standard error so that is this so this is for the male and then this is for the female and you can also do indexed so indexed is when you put all in one column so you have the male male female male female in one column and then um their responses also in one column so let's say this is a rate they are rating something between let's say 2 point 2 point 5 to let's say 4 and these are the responses that they gave so let's just start by choosing raw and next and then let's go for male and then female and hit finish so it brings up this report for us and then from the report it gives us the date it tells us the t-test it gives us the data source and then it tells us that we have a normality test and it gives us test that was used for it and then for normality it's passed so if it was randomly distributed it would fail and then it also gives us the equal variance test so it also passed and used this model and everything is quite as we've already done in the previous one so you have the missing standard deviation the mean so you see the mean of the two groups and then this is the difference between the mean and now it comes to the equal variance assumed so if equal variance is assumed this is the result and also if equal variances not assumed this is the result so it gives us like the p values for normality and equal variance so the p value for instance determines the probability of being incorrect in concluding that the data is not normally distributed so the p-value is kind of like the risk of falsely rejecting the null hypothesis that the data is normally distributed if the p computed by the test is greater than the p set here the test passes so you can kind of also come in and go to options and then change like the p-value to require a stricter adherence to normality and equal variance decrease the p-value because the parametric statistical method are relatively robust in terms of detecting violations of the assumptions 
the suggested value in sigma plot is 0.05 larger values of p for instance 0.1 requires less evidence to conclude that the data is not normal and then you also have the variance so you can change it decrease it if you decrease it it becomes more sharper and if you increase it it doesn't become sharper so you can have like results that is not normal but because you said it but if for some reason your data requires you to increase it then you can do that and you can also change the model for the normality so you can change it here and also the result so you can have a summary table confidence level and you can also have both so we had test for equal means so we had both which are these two and then you can also have the p values you can have two tailed or one tail and then also the post hoc can also be adjusted this way so just to give the last overview of this the first thing that you have here is your normality test so the normality test result shows whether the data passed or failed the test of the assumption that the samples were drawn from a normal population and the p-value calculated by the test all parametric tests require normal distributed source population so this result is set in the option so you can come in and also set it as we've shown now also equal variance test now the equal variance test result displays whether or not the data passed or failed the test of the assumption that the samples were drawn from populations with the same variance and the p-value calculated by the test so equal variance of the source population is assumed for all parametric tests and then you have your summary table so zigma plots generate a summary table listing the sizes n for the two samples number of missing values means standard deviation and standard error of the means which is scm this result is displayed unless you disable the other point is the degree of freedom so the degree of freedom represents the sample size which affects the ability of the test or the t-test to detect differences in the means so as degree of freedom increases the ability to detect the difference with a small t decreases and then also the p-value so the p-value is the probability of being wrong in concluding that there is a true difference in the two groups so the smaller the p-value the greater the probability that the sample is drawn from different populations traditionally you can conclude there is a significant difference when p is less than 0 0.05 so if it's less than 0 0.05 then there is a significant difference then there is also level of confidence so the level of confidence is adjusted in the options so larger values of confidence result in wider intervals and smaller values in smaller intervals you can also generate graphs so you can come in to generate graph and you can have bar chart and all these graph so you can go in if you want a bar chart the t-test bar chart plot the group means as vertical bars with error bars indicating the standard deviation and then you can also have the scatter plot with error bars and column means now the t-test scatter plot graphs the group means a single point with error bars indicating the standard deviation and then you also have the point plot and a histogram and a normal distribution so you can play along with this as well